I've had my new 1500MX for a couple weeks now, and I've shipped probably about 75 parts off of it. But those parts have all been either mild steel or plastic. Today, we need to answer the question, does it hard mill? I need to make 18 parts out of these A2 steel blanks. These blanks were heat treated to 60 Rockwell and will happily skate a file. The file doesn't even touch them. This is going to be a challenge, both for me and for the machine. I don't think I've machined anything harder than like a pre-hardened 4140, and that sits at about 45 Rockwell, which is really not that hard in comparison to 60 Rockwell. The machine I already have set up, the part I am of course holding down using the super glue method because it's so wide and thin, and my tools are already set and loaded in the ATC. At this point, we're pretty much just ready to hit go and hope nothing breaks. All right, cross your fingers, guys. I have never done any hard milling before. I'm basically just guessing at all my speeds and feeds, and hopefully it'll work out. All right, will it cut? She's cutting. I'm taking a five thou step down and a fairly little wide width of cut. I think about um, probably a quarter of an inch width of cut with a five thou step down. But that actually is beautiful. Spindle load's only at 20%, though I think it's more a matter of killing the tool. Well, that, that, this is easy so far. I don't know if you can see it, but the end of my tool is starting to glow red a little bit, which uh, can't be a great sign. I tried slowing down the feed a little bit and the speed. I don't know if it helped any. It also doesn't seem to like exiting the cut for some reason. It does better on the entrance. I don't know. I, I'm just going to leave it in my original feeds and speeds. I think a little bit of orange is normal during hard milling. I'll tell you what my tool looks like in a couple more passes. Well, we seem to have at least answered the initial question. Does the 1500MX hard mill? Yeah, it hard mills. Now, we have not answered the question of does AJ strategies and tooling and process, is it good and reliable? Eh, I don't know yet. We'll find that one out. I have 18 of these parts to make. I have two blanks spare total, but I have 18 to make by my cam estimate they have a seven hour runtime each for op one. Uh, op two is pretty minimal. It'll probably just be like an hour each, but there's gonna be a lot of hard milling in this machine's future. So this first pass, I think, went super well. The top is nice and shiny and smooth, and I think that'll be good enough. Now we start to get to some of the smaller tools and the smaller details. So we'll see how that goes. Right, here goes nothing. Okay, that wasn't great. I had to cut my feeds and speeds back by 
I think part of that may be this is just the wrong tool. This tool is a uh, aluminum tool. This is not even a tool for steel, much less hard milling. But I ordered the right version of the tool and it's just not here yet. It'll be here later today. So if I can make at least one or two parts with this one, that'll be fine. I'm gonna try adjusting the nozzle position here and hopefully that'll do it. It did cut at least. So that's something, as long, and the tool is still there. As long as we continue cutting and the tool being there, we'll be okay. Oh, it happened, we broke our first tool. It was a 1 16th inch end mill. It looks like it got most of the pocket. I'll have to check the cam. There may have been like a weird lead in or lead out thing that caused it to break, or it could have just been speeds and feeds. I'm not sure yet. So long story short, it seems to be a cam issue. This corner here gets really, really tight. Though there's not actually a reason for that to be tight because this border here eventually gets machined away. And this here is like a open pocket on the outside contour of the actual part itself. So I think by changing how the cam handles that tight corner, I should be good. Well, we got a little bit further that time, but we just broke another one of those same tools. I found a place in my cam where I was using my traditional steel speeds and feeds, and I hadn't changed them over to the hard milling speeds and feeds. And so I think that's what's breaking the tool, but we'll try again and hopefully it works this time because I have to go teach. I'm gonna put you guys back inside and put you on time-lapse mode. You can watch the machine for me while I'm teaching. I've not yet managed to get out the door, even though I really should, because I'm running out of time. But what I have managed to do is break that same 1 16th inch end mill a couple times. I've tried playing with speeds and feeds, and I still keep breaking it. I think I just need to go even more conservative. But while I was playing with it, I realized that I actually can get a slightly larger tool in there. So if I go to the eighth inch tool, I can do almost all the same material removal. It will be faster and I probably won't break the tool. So this time I loaded up the new code. This time I'm actually going to leave and hopefully that does it for us. It is the next day now and I've made quite a bit of progress. The big thing that happened is my end mills that I purchased to do this job came in. And while these aren't traditional like hard milling end mills, they're definitely better than what I was using. The big game changer is these. These are eighth inch five flute bull nose end mills. And they give me quite a few capabilities I didn't have before. First of all, I was able to change over some of the features that I was milling out with a 1 16th inch end mill and switch them over to those and that has reduced my cycle time by like two hours per. And I have 18 of these to do, so that's a lot of machine time. Secondly, I was able to take these features right here, which were originally surfaced with a 1 16th inch ball mill, and change those over to being surfaced in with my 1 8th inch bull nose. And not only has it left me better finishes, it again took off a whole bunch of cycle time. The same thing is true for these countersinks. I was able to surface them in with the bull nose, and it saved about five minutes per countersink, and there are five more countersinks on the other side of this part. So a little bit of an update on this hard milling project. I've been at this for 
honestly a couple of days now and I'm slowly but surely making progress. There's one big thing that I'm running into and that is the tool life of the 1 16th inch end mill that I'm using for slotting. I have tried a ton of different speeds and feeds recipes. I've tried different approaches and different strategies and I'm still having a hard time getting more than like half of a part per tool, which is particularly annoying because I don't watch this machine for 16 hours a day. So when I break one of those tools, I don't always notice until the tool or the, the part is done. And by the time the part's done, I've already wasted like three hours of machine time that I ha then have to rerun before starting the next part. I have tried changing the strategy one more time where it is now instead of ramping down, it's plunging and then cutting and then plunging and then cutting. Maybe that'll help with tool life. Other than that, I'm kind of out of ideas. I have spent so much money on 1 16th inch end mills for this job. My hard milling adventures continue. I'm still trying to find a reliable method for doing these 1 16th inch slots. I've tried coolant, I've tried the air mist, I've tried different tool paths, I've tried ramping, I've tried slotting, I've tried everything. I did find that coolant was working better for me because I think it just had more ability to clear out the chips. The only problem is I was running into this weird issue where I would start a program, the coolant would look just fine, I would walk off, I would come back an hour later, and I would find there was a big pile of chips next to the slot and the tool would be broken. And I could not figure out what it was because it was working when I hit go. I checked coolant levels and you know, the coolant was fine. There was plenty in there. I even added more than there should be, but it was still, for some reason, the coolant would just turn off after a bit. I checked my code thinking it was an issue with my, my G code, but nothing. I finally figured it out. It was my coolant filter. Now, I, I just cleaned this out and that definitely solved my issue, but this had clogged up because of all the teeny tiny hard milling chips. And actually I can even see the pressure is still starting to drop some there. So I probably need to go back to the fog buster because that doesn't have a filter that can clog and I need to order some more, some more filters for that. When you're normal milling, when you're not hard milling, you definitely still make fines that need to be filtered out. But when you're hard milling, the chips, especially with this 1 16th inch end mill slotting, the chips are so small that they don't get caught up in the normal, just like mesh that normally does the bulk of the filtering. And so they get caught up in that fine filter, which then clogs it really quick. So I'm just gonna manually go back to my mist here and that should solve that problem at least. I think at some point I just have to accept that this is gonna eat through a lot of these 1 16th inch end mills. So far, the best I have been able to get is five slots per tool, and there are seven slots on a part. Right now, the program I'm running, I have just cut my surface speed by half. So I've gone from 10,000 RPM to 5,000 RPM, and, and I'm just hoping that'll make the tools last longer. Um, I've got about four more of these parts to make, and I'm down to less than four tools. So um, I need my tool life to go up, otherwise I'm gonna have to you know, delay this order even more than it already is. I have been working on these parts for so long. The Tormach has done maybe over a hundred hours of hard milling at this point. Oh, definitely over a hundred hours of hard milling at this point. I have just scrapped my second part. It was this one. It was going so well into the last slotting operation. It looks like the tool got dull and then either heated up the glue or just put more force into it, and it popped it off, broke the tool, and it ate up just the very side of this, of the actual part. You can kind of see where it was cutting through there. And scrapped the part. So, the only other one I've scrapped is this one. And this happened in the very first tool path. Uh, it was facing it off, and this plate warped. This is the only one of these A2, like, hardened plates that has warped on me. I don't know why this one was different than all the other ones, but it decided that it needed to pop off. So I've only, I've only scrapped two so far, which is good because these things have so much machine time in them. 
I think my current toolpath time is about nine hours because I slowed down the surface speed on those slotting operations to preserve tool life. So I'll be very glad when this is done and gone and out of my shop. So to answer the original question on this video, can you hard mill on a 1500MX? Absolutely, the machine does a fantastic job. Um, <laughs> am I good at slotting with small tools at 60 Rockwell A2? No, I don't know how to do it very well and I'm still struggling, but it's not the machine's fault. It, this thing has handled it fantastically. It's run for, it has run for well over 100 hours in 60 Rockwell A2 over the last two weeks or so and it has not complained once. But I need one more of these op ones, and then we can start doing the op twos. I have made a mistake. And the worst thing is it's a mistake that I knew that I was making the whole time, but I was rushing and trying to work on other things. And so I never took the time to fix it. The results of that mistake were this piece right here, which is warped to all kinds of bad places. Um, this is not chippable. Uh, plus it popped off my fixture and broke a half inch end mill and otherwise caused mayhem. But this piece itself wasn't actually the mistake. Um, my biggest mistake was trying to run all of the op ones and then all of the op twos. I know that's a bad idea, but I still did it because I didn't take the time to get op two set up earlier in the process. The reason this was a mistake is because I probably could have found a way to work around this issue had I been more on top of things in the beginning and ran op one, op two, you know, in parallel and series or whatever you want to call it, single piece flowing it instead of batch working. Because now I don't know if all of those parts that I've spent hours on are going to do exactly the same potato chip maneuver. I'm hoping not because this one was actually more warped coming out of op one than all of my other ones. So I'm hoping that the the other parts at very least will survive. But there's a good chance they won't. 